Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to our morning Bhagavatam class. This morning, the class will be on Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 9, Verse 14. And the title of the chapter is The Passing of Lord B the Passing of Bhishma Dev and the Presence of Lord Krishna. And the class will be given by His Holiness Chandramali Swami. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, my obeisances. And it's all yours, Maharaj. Okay. Let's see here. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 9, The Passing Away of Grandfather Bhishma and the Presence of Lord Krishna, verse number 14. Sarva Kala Kritam Manye Bhavatam Chayat Apriham Sapalo Yavase Loko by your Eva Ganavalihi translation. In my opinion, this is all due to inevitable, in, inevitable, inevitable time under whose control everyone in every planet is carried just as the clouds are carried by the wind. Report. This there is control by time all over the space within the universe, as there is control by time all over the planets. All the big gigantic planets, including the sun, are being controlled by the force of air, as the clouds are carried by the force of air. Similarly, the inevitable kala or time controls even the actions of the air and other elements. Everything, therefore, is controlled by the supreme kala a forceful representative of the Lord within the material world. Thus, Yudhisthira should not be sorry for the inconceivable action of time. Everyone has to bear the actions and reactions of time as long as one is within the conditions of the material world. Yudhisthira should not think that he had committed sins in his previous birth and is suffering the consequences. Even the most pious has to suffer the condition of material nature. But a pious man is faithful to the Lord, for he is guided by a bona fide Brahmana and Vaishnava following the religious principles. These three guiding principles should be the aim of life. One should not be disturbed by the tricks of eternal time. Even the great controller of the universe, Brahmaji, being a true follower of religious principles. When we gyan to midam dasya gyana jena salakaya, chaksu unnalitam yena tasmai shri gadavena maha, yama om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale, shri makti bhakti vedanta swami iti namine, Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaur Vani Pacharine Nirvise Sasunyavari Pasyatya De Sutarine Panchakalpa Tarubhischa Puripa Sindhu Pare Vicha Patita Nam Pavane Jo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasavi Gaur Bhaktivindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. Kala Time Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita Mitra Sarva Bahalasya Aham I am that time in the form of taking away everything that 
everyone has. Time is that factor which brings things about, moves things along, and ultimately destroys things. Everything created is under the influence of time. Everything coming from the manifested energy of the Lord or the spiritual energy does not is not affected by the time factor. And so there are many millions of universes and they have many millions of planets with many millions of living entities. Everyone within this, what is called Bahiranga Shakti, or the external energy of the Lord, is under the influence of the time factor. For the materialists, it's the fearful aspect of existence. Their plans and all of their hopes, dreams, aspirations gets punctured completely, destroyed, stopped by the influence of time. You'll see that the materialists, they always have plans for the future, but time to the controller of time. Therefore, it says that the external feature of Krishna in the material world is the time factor. As Krishna says, I am time. Time has many definitions. It's called uh, inevitable, as it says here. That means you can't get around it. <laughs> it's inconceivable how it acts, brings things about and takes things away. It's immovable. In other words, it cannot be replaced by anything else. It is uh, insurmountable, another uh, adjective to describe it. No one can somehow or other surmount or overcome the influence of time. In the Bhagavatam in the 10th canto it says, as a herdsman moves his flock of animals from one pasture to another, time moves the living entities from one material situation to another. The time factor is Krishna. Sometimes we find that people say, well, I don't believe in God. There is no God. But then you believe in time. Yes. Well, that time is manifested in the form of taking everything you away. So you don't believe in God, but you believe in but you are under the influence of a higher power, which comes in the form of taking everything away, including your material body. So that, that's why Krishna says, Mitya Sarvahasya, for the non-devotees, I am the time factor, or I am death. Do devotees, uh, it says here, in Prabhupada's mentioned is that even the pious has to undergo the influence of the time factor. And that means even though one is religious and following religious principles, still, as long as one has a material body, time will change the situation. And at one point, the material body will no longer exist. Is that uh, for the non-devotees, that is the most fearful situation, in fact, we find that when we speak about this principle of death, the non-devotees get very disturbed about that. They don't want to hear that subject matter. They say, why do you, you are so negative, you're so morbid, you're so, uh, why don't you speak about something that is more happy? We do, we do that also. <laughs> Chant the holy names of the Lord and be happy. But uh, we don't uh, neglect the time factor because the time factor is very influential. People make plans in time. People try to work on their plans within time and time brings about the results of their plan making. The time is very influential. That's another uh, aspect of the time 
Now for the uh, non-devotees, if they want to be successful in material life, or if they want to use all their time and energy for success, they have to forget about death because therefore they cannot really become determined to fulfill their material desires if they are aware of the, of the time factor in the form of the closing curtain on the whole dramatic pro program. So we say, all right, materialists, you wanna be successful, forget about death. But then we say to the spiritualists, those who are engaged in devotional service, one should be aware that of the time factor and that at any time, as Sila Prabhupada would emphasize, you know, one can be removed from their material situation. But a devotee is not fearful because devotee takes shelter of Krishna and devotee works on behalf of Krishna. There is a, there is a story where a story, a little analogy. They use a, there's a particular machine called a Deki, D E K H I, a Deki machine. The Deki machine is a heat, uh, is a wheat husking machine. If you take the Deki and you put it in the lower planetary systems, it'll husk wheat. If you bring it to the middle planetary systems, it'll do the same, husk wheat. If you take it to the higher planetary systems, the activity is the same. So a, de a devotee is like a deki. They're here serving Krishna now, and when they leave the body, they'll be doing the same thing. <laughs> serving Krishna somewhere else, or maybe even back to the spiritual world. In other words, their engagement of devotional service once begun becomes an eternal factor of their existence. And when they develop that attachment for Krishna through devotional service, then it doesn't really matter where they are as long as they can serve Krishna. Lord Shiva made a nice statement to his wife, Parvati, describing how a devotee is like a compass. A compass is always uh, synchronized by the northern direction. And that's how they make compasses. It's synchronized by north. So you put the little red arrow on the on the pointer and on the northern side, and then you can see where the directions are. So a devotee is always thinking or always serving Krishna. It doesn't matter where they are. They can be in heaven, they can be in hell, they can be in Harrisburg, they can be in Slovenia, they can be in India, they can be in wherever they are, they're serving the Lord. Therefore, it's not so much the place, although some places are more favorable and other places are not as favorable, but for a devotee, they make a favorable situation wherever they are, just like sometimes we speak. And this is an experience I have I see people who are in jail, who are devotees practicing Krishna consciousness in jail. They turn their little living cell into a little altar where they have pictures, sometimes little tiny porcelain deities that they get, they put there and uh, they decorate their cell up. And it's, it's, a, uh, it's like a little mandir. <laughs> And they worship there, they chant there, they do everything, and they never leave their one dear. Oh, sometimes they do, but not in a regular way. So this is uh, a devotee is not so much concerned about where they are, but what they're doing is more important, <laughs> serving the Lord. And therefore, for a devotee, it says that a devotee should think, well, how much time do I have left in this body? I don't really know. Prabhupada said Maharaj Prikshit had seven days left. 
And he knew after seven days, he would uh, have to leave the world. So he prepared himself to hear the glories of the of Srimad Bhagavatam, the glories of Krishna and Vrindavan, and amongst, amongst all of his other incarnations. For seven solid days, he didn't do anything else but hear the glories of the Lord. He developed this, such an attraction and a love for Krishna through that hearing process that he very, without even the slightest iota of fear, he went on to his, to, to his next destination. And so, but Prabhupada said, you know, Maharaj Pariksit was guaranteed seven days. And Prabhupada would always say, and I hear it all the time in his lectures, you're not guaranteed seven minutes. <laughs> Nobody knows when you're going to go. Uh, you might think everything is nice, but then all of a sudden something happens. You go to the doctor, he says, hmm, we just found something. And uh, based on our medical expertise, we realized it's fatal. We don't have the ability to save you. So you have that much time. So uh, um, use your time wisely. <laughs> and that means prepare to go back home, back to Godhead. So that should be the principle. And there was, there's one particular statement. Perhaps I've said it before in, in different lectures many times that there's two things you should always remember and two things you should always forget. The two things you should always forget is you forget all the bad things that others have done to you. And you should also forget all the good things you did for others. That way you always remain humble and free from false pride. And forgetting all the bad things people have done to you you develop a sense of forgiveness and a sense of tolerance, and then you you can chant your holy, the holy name nicely without a disturbed mind. Um, the two things you should always remember, you should always remember the holy name, and you should always remember that death can happen at any moment. And these are the principles that guide a devotee using their time wisely. In other words, it's an, Krishna consciousness is an emergency. It's not something we should think, oh, I can put it on hold, I'm young. I got so many material plans and I haven't fulfilled them yet. And uh, I've been doing that for, for a long time, making these plans. But plan to go back home, back to Godhead, because that is where success in life uh, lies. It lies in the spiritual world, not in this material world. Because material world means body and material world means temporary. Material world means suffering. Even the best situation is prone to suffering because of the temp the time factor takes everything away. So here um, Prabhupada gives a kind of a sweeping definition or explanation of how time works to engage everything and everyone in the uh, element of change. Time is only the material energy. This is, it says that there's one constant principle that governs material energy and that's change. Things are always changing. Our bodies are changing. Our perceptions of life are evolving or devolving, depending. Um, things are changing all the time. This is in nature. And our bodies are going through changes one after another. And time is that element that is moving things along. But for a devotee, Time is bringing one closer to Krishna, closer to eternal life. Therefore, they don't fear the time factor. They fear wasting the time that they have left in the material world and not using it to prepare oneself for one's trip or what we say sojourn 
that's so joy, I'm sorry, one's uh, uh, elevation back to the spiritual world. The devotee has no fear because the devotee, they're under the control of Krishna and they're not under the control of time. The devotee is not under the control of time, he's under the control of Krishna. Uh, and time is, is a very bad master. Krishna is the best master because Krishna, Krishna works in such a way as to, he, to arrange for the devotee to get everything, enough time for, to prepare themselves to go back home and back to Godhead. If we waste our life in material existence and we continue on that way, then Krishna may see, rather than let this foolish person go down, I can shorten their life so they don't go deeper into the material world and, and become more and more entangled. So Krishna is always thinking of the welfare of his devotees, therefore a devotee always takes shelter of Krishna. And as it says, for a devotee, time is eternal. In other words, whatever you're doing now, you'll be doing eternally, serving Krishna and loving devotion. And so uh, there's no fear. Fear comes by way of seeing the time factor as being separate from Krishna. This time factor is not separate from Krishna. It works under his control and it, he manifests himself as time. Yeah, as he says, I am time. But that's for the non-devotees. For the devotees, he is eternal time. For the non-devotees, he is the time that will somehow or other cut short everyone's plans to be happy in this material world. <laughs> that's Krishna. Um, in the Bhagavatam, and actually in the Bhagavad Gita, it's mentioned that time is one of the major topics. There are five major topics in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, Purusha, Prakriti, uh, Jiva, Kala, Karma. So Kala is one of the five time. And Krishna speaks about that quite often in the Bhagavad Gita and, Prasila, and also in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we find Prabhupada speaks about that a lot in his discussions on devotional service. So um, if we want to be successful in life, use your time wisely. Don't waste time. They say that money you can, you can lose and then you can also regain money. It comes and it goes, and it can come again, can also go again. Money can go either way, but time only goes one way. And therefore, time is very precious. It's more valuable than material wealth because it is the gift to use to purify our consciousness and devotional service and go back home, back to Godhead. And one who chants the glories of the Lord, as it says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto. You want to you want to go to that verse, uh, second canto, verse numbers, uh, second canto, chapter number three, and verse number seventeen. Hmm. Yeah, this is a very nice verse. Ahor haranti vampum sam udam astam che yada so tasyar te yad shano nuta utama sloka vartaya. Both the rising and the setting, both by rising and setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except, here's the word, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all good personality of Godhead. The time factor is not for devotees who engage in hearing and chanting of the Lord. 
And Prabhupada will explain that as you go down to the purport a little bit farther. Uh, there we go. Oh, yeah, it's quite a long purple. The sun fails to rob the pure devotee of devotional inasmuch as he is constantly busy in devotional service, purifying his... Death is a symptom of material infection, interesting, of the eternal living being. Only due to material infection, infection is the eternal living entity subjected to the law of birth, death, disease, and old age. So, uh, yeah. So, and, and then they're the very, in the end, it says here, um, a moment passed in the association of a pure devotee by hearing and chanting the transcendental message of the Lord is a perfect guarantee for eternal life, for returning back home, back to Godhead. Madhama Gadva Purnam Janmana Vidyate. In other words, a devotee of the Lord is guaranteeing eternal life. The devotee's old age or disease in the present life is but an impetus to such a guaranteed eternal life. Very positive, followed by the saying. As you grow older, you're getting closer to eternal life. But we have to prepare for that. And therefore, here's the way to prepare this verse. Hear and chant the glories of the Lord. By, by doing that, we develop an attraction for the Lord. As that attraction increases, one develops strong attachment for Krishna. As that attachment develops, then love starts to manifest. Uh, so it's all about hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And so uh, we should be thinking, how much time am I using for hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord? As opposed to how am I using my time in a general way? So we should always be reflective. And uh, we have books, we have videos, we have seminars, classes, yatras, programs to, to come together to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. And by developing an attraction, by developing a regimen of regularly hearing and chanting, that attachment for Krishna will become stronger and stronger. Okay, and the devotee doesn't worry about the time factor. It's simply, it's simply there. It, it freaks out the non-devotees and it's the friend of the devotees. <laughs> Okay, so we can stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you so much, Marva. Such a wonderful class and really making it so simple for us to understand. Yet the rascal mind gets rascal sometimes. And that's why we always, it's so healthy for us to hear and ask questions. We'd like to ask devotees if you have any questions, um, anything that you would like Maharaj to shed a light upon and clarify, please do. Either raise your hand or you can just jump right in. And uh, yes, Mother Gita. Hi, Krishna, Mother. Uh, yeah, go ahead and go back to gallery and then ask the yes, devotees Maharaj. to uh, be come into their manifested forms of existence. <laughs> <laughs> for the sake of for the sake of the speaker. <laughs> No problem, Maharaj. No problem. Okay. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to you. Maharaj, you mentioned that the uh, time is uh, for the devotees. The time is under the control of Krishna. Could you please give a practical example to understand this? Yeah. Mm. Uh, a practical example, well, I can give a philosophical statement, and that is, uh, once you engage in devotional service, you're no longer under the influence of your destined karma. Your karma is gradually being destroyed. And at one point, all the karma is gone, and then you're completely under the control of Krishna. Krishna wants you to live 100 years, 
for whatever reasons, then that'll happen. If he wants to take you back tomorrow, that'll happen. In other words, he becomes, he becomes the factor by which you depart the material world. It's no longer your karma or your whatever else. It's con he's, you're controlled completely by Krishna. Krishna is that death factor. But he is not death for a devotee, he is eternal life for a devotee. So a devotee thinks, oh, yeah, we pray to Krishna, we say, my dear Lord, give me enough time in this material world so I can become a pure devotee. That way, when I leave my body, I can go back home, back to Godhead. And Krishna will say, hmm, well, I think this person is very serious. So... I'll make arrangements for them to become a pure devotee. And then it's up to us to follow those arrangements. <laughs> okay. So Krishna wants to take you back to Godhead more than you want to go back. That's, that's a Shastric statement. But we also have to follow the process and purify ourselves from more material attachments. And that is devotional service. So um, if we're serious on the path of devotional service, and, and then Krishna will let you stay as long as you, as long, until you come to the point of pure devotee, then he'll take you back to Godhead. Or even if you reach pure devotee, he might leave you in the material world to preach to others. And then you don't really care. Once you become a devotee, pure devotee, you don't care where, they, where you are. Because you're, you're with Krishna no matter what you're doing. You're always with Krishna. So your karma is no longer acting. And there are many whose karma, have, it, your karma changes as soon as you engage in devotional service. You're no longer influenced by your destined karma. It's gone. At one point, it's gone. It goes gradually, but at one point, it'll be completely eradicated. That's Krishna. He wants to take you back, Godhead. And so he'll allow you, if you're serious, if you're not serious in devotional service, then will do things to help you become serious, but if you don't take the message, then uh, you might find yourself in a very awkward con condition and have to struggle again with the material energy. And then, um, and then we're uh, more or less, again, putting ourselves under the influence of the material energy. But if we simply follow the instructions of Krishna coming through his pure devotee, the spiritual master, we are always under his complete umbrella care. And he takes care of his devotees more than he takes care of himself. <laughs> That's a statement also. <laughs> the demigods are his empowered representatives to manifest the functions of the material energy. But he says, my de one who engages my de in my devotional service is more dear to Lord to me than Lord Brahma, to Lord Shiva, even Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. Even my very self is not as dear as those who engage in my, devo in my devotional service. The devotional service is really it's actually a manifestation of Srimati Radharani's energy. She is devotional service personified. So when you take when you engage in devotional service, you're under Bhakti Devi or Srimati Radharani. And she is elevating you according to your devotion towards Krishna more and more, and she's guiding you also. The spiritual master is a representation of Srimati Radharani or Lord Dityananda, either one. So both of them are guru tattva in the sense that Nityananda is guru tattva in the general sense and Radharani is guru tattva for the, in the higher sense of pure devotion to Krishna.
you know, have nothing to worry about as long as you stay engaged in devotional service and try to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. This is the formula. We have to make time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord regularly. Just like this class, this daily class is one of the features of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. But it's only one hour or maybe a little more. For one who is engaged in devotional service, they want to use much of their time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, not just one hour or two hours four hours as much as possible hope that it helped mother gita yes thank you so much Maharaj. thank you Maharaj, there's, there's some a uh, question here from rishab das prabhu he said Hare krishna Jai Gurudev. thank you for this wonderful perception of death is always near and naturally Krishna consciousness becomes the first and only concern in our life. Now I feel like I don't really live spiritually, but have spiritual moments in the day. Now I am stating to understand this more and starting to understand this more and more. Still find moments when it's very hard to focus on Krishna, but I will keep on chanting with endeavor. Any comments, Guru Maharaj? Your servant Rishab does. Yeah, make, make your chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, your prescribed 16 rounds, your most important part of the day. That sets the foundation. And it helps you to remember Krishna throughout the day. And uh, there are so many ways you can facilitate memories of Krishna. You can decorate the place where you stay with pictures of Krishna. You can play classes about devotional service by Srila Prabhupada and by his devotees. If we just organize our life in such a way that we're always in contact with the spiritual energy, then the material energy is conspicuous by its absence. We don't even feel the presence of the material energy anymore. It's like it doesn't exist. I hope that helps, Shop Prabhu. And Krishna, yes. Um, I just like uh, thinking, like you know, to kind of uh, not do it just one day because you know we kind of have like one day of such absorption, and then you know the next week, you know, you're like this start, this start. This. So yeah, just kind of keeping like day by the day, take it day a day and just kind of really, you know, understanding how much, you know, materially affected we are and just kind of keeping on continuing. Yeah, remaining understand. steady in the execution of devotional service, those, those ups and downs in our, in our spiritual practice will become less and one becomes more steady. And that's a matter of time, which comes by way of training the mind and devotion. <laughs> Marsh, there's a question from uh, Vishaka Harkishan Marsh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada, all glories to you. In the purport of this verse, Shri Prabhupada mentions that a devotee should seek guidance from the bona fide Brahmana and Vaishnava. Why does Prabhupada mention both a Brahmana and a Vaishnava? What is implied by this statement? Um, I think what he's saying, he's talking to two groups of people. And for the non-devotees, they should seek out uh, a Brahmana, because a Brahmana is considered to be the highest uh, material position in the, in, in, the, in the material world, the highest position in the material world. But a, but a Vaishnava is all, all, already a Brahmana. But a Brahmana is not necessarily a Vaishnava. No, I think Prabhupada is saying that um, uh, because Brahmanas, a real Brahmana, knows Shastra, he's as, almost as good as a Vaishnava because he, he lives according to Shastra. 
but there are different kinds of brahmanas where Vaishnava is very exclusive. It's really, uh, I, I have to see that statement again and how, the, how it's worded within the context of the sentence. Would you like me to we, go to that verse, Marge? Yeah, I think it might give okay. a little clarification because because Prabhupada talks about piety in this same uh, purport. So those who are pious will seek out a Brahmana. Those who are, who are spiritually inclined will seek out a Vaishnava. There it is, Marge. I think she's talking about um, this verse right here. A pious man is faithful to the Lord for he is guided by the bona fide Brahmana and Vaishnava following the religious principles. Bona fide means not just Brahmana in name, but one who is actually a real Brahmana. A pious man is faithful to the Lord. And therefore, he should be guided by either a Brahmana or a Vaishnava. It's talked about guide, being guided. And that Brahmana and Vaishnava is one who follows religious principles. I hope that helped, Vishaka. For Marge, us, we I'm seek sorry. out a Vaishnava. For a pious man, he may seek out a Brahmana. It's almost a little concessionary for those who are pious. That's basically it. A pious man may never may not come to a Vaishnava, but at least he should go to a Brahmana. Marsh, can I shall I get out of the screen so we can get to the yeah. camera? Okay. Come back, come back to the sure. yeah. Okay, maybe Shaka said that helped. Other questions from devotees? Um, you can either raise your hand or you can just unmute yourself and jump right in. I'm just going down the list to make sure that I don't miss anyone. Marge, when you were speaking about um, time, you also touched upon fear and human nature unfortunately when they think of oh i'm running out of time there's so much fear that comes with it how can we as devotees try to work on overcoming the aspect of fear with time fear well fear really means two number two uh, and the principle of existence is Krishna says, Aham sarvasya prabhavam matat sarvam pravartante iti pajal pravante man buddha bhava saman vitaha. I am the source of all material and spiritual world. Everything comes from me. The wise who know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. Uh, Krishna is a supreme control. Maya Dakshena Prakriti Suryate Satcharacharam. Material energy works under his control. And the statements that have been given in regard is that not a blade of grass can move without the sanction of the Lord. So if one knows that there's nothing outside of the influence of the Lord, there's no question of fear. Because fear means there's something else besides Krishna. And there isn't. But one, there is a, there's a type of fear that is considered to be recommended, and that is called the fear of, the fear of Maya. That uh, one becomes careful, and in a sense, slightly fearful that I should be careful not to somehow or other, again, slip back into my material activities or be victimized by Maya. 
So there's a kind of like a cautionary type of fear that comes with a devotee who thinks in that way, uh, yeah, let me act in such a way as that I don't get caught by Maya again. So that's, that's called a healthy fear of Maya. And it's recommended. But Prabhupada tells the story of his own existence when he was during World War II, when he was living in in Calcutta, uh, the war was going on, and the uh, the Germans were bombing the English quarter, and and Prabhupada would uh, be there with his family, and he was there one time with one of his friends, and so the sirens alerted everyone that the bombs are about to come, so take shelter of the bomb shelters. Prabhupada was in the evening and Prabhupada's wife had just finished cooking uh, the evening meal. And so um, it was, he was about to ready to take the meal. But uh, his friend said, oh, and Prabhupada's name was Abai. Abai, let's go to the bunkers. The bomb's about to come. Prabhupada said, you go. I'm going to stay here and have uh, my evening meal. And then Prabhupada describes it in his own words that the bombs were coming and he mimics the bombs, making the sounds of bombs coming through the air. He said, I was, I was thinking the bombs are coming and here comes Krishna in the form of a bomb. <laughs> so that's pure vision and seeing Krishna everywhere and in everything. <laughs> So we don't, we may not be on that platform, but that that principle is actually the foundation for understanding truth, and that is nothing can happen without the without the sanction of the Lord. So if devotees of always taking shelter of the Lord, there's no question of any fear. Fear comes when we lose that shelter, or we get into the our own independent way of doing things and then we start calculating well, this is uh, this situation will cause me fear like that but just like I'll, I'll show you how how powerful fear is and this is very true that people are they'll sit in their room in the evening time and then it'll be a power failure and all the lights will go out and it'll be complete darkness. And the people will think, all of a sudden they get fearful, thinking maybe there's something now in the room that's going to get me, <laughs> cause me some. <laughs> because we can't see, we think the, the, the environment has changed <laughs> and we become fearful. Uh, so fear is, a, is one of the characteristics of material existence. But to, be, to develop fearlessness uh, means to somehow or other uh, depend on Krishna in every, each and every situation. We were just discussing this as a topic yesterday in my Zoom call, regular class, that Krishna is the supreme protector. And one should understand that there's no protection outside of Krishna. And that was indicated as one of the principles of a devotee. The devotee knows that there is no protection outside of Krishna. So one who takes shelter of Krishna and engages in devotional service is fearless. Thank you, Maharaj. I'm sorry. Not, but not foolish. <laughs> what I mean by not foolish is one doesn't flaunt material energy just to test Krishna's protection. You can't do that. You live according to how you're supposed to live properly and always depend on Krishna. You can't say, well, I'll just walk out in the midst of a busy highway and I'll just cross the highway and Krishna will protect me. Uh, that's foolish. Uh, so we have to use our intelligence on how to live in this world, but at the same time, always depend on Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. 
Are there other questions from devotees? Any um, clarification, any thought that you would like to um, ask Marge to shed some light on? Just want to remind devotees if you're able to, based on where you're at, if you could turn on the video as per Marge's request, so we can have some personal um, interaction. It's enough that it's computerized. <laughs> If there is any, Marge, would you like, I'm just going down the list, I don't forget anybody. Marge, would you like to um, chant one round, Marge, if you have the time? Yeah, the time is available. Is it, is it a courtesy in America now? Yes, Marge, it's a, it's a courtesy today. Yeah, so it's very appropriate that we, yes. and it's courtesy here also. Oh, how do you want? We are in the, European countries and and she got us <laughs> so uh, we are concluding our discussion I I'm waiting for questions from devotees and some of and not getting much but much you can lengthen the class Japa it's whatever you wish March <laughs> anything you say March Correction, what should I do? <laughs> I have a question. Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, Step on hold the basis. It's going to she 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 Okay. She Maybe she did. We can go ahead. <laughs> I can be. I can be. No, 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 no. no, no, that's okay. I oh, wasn't okay. going to ask a question, so go ahead. Okay. Uh, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. On this question of time, that devotee is not under the control of time, but under the control of Krishna, that Krishna will decide how, when, where, how the devotee will leave. So when devotees pass away in an accident, you know, a terrible car crash or a plane crash or things like that, how are we supposed to understand that? Well, this is the material world. We have to be careful. But if we're taking shelter of Krishna, generally he protects the devotee. Somehow if we don't take shelter of Krishna, or there are special occasions where Krishna will use the material energy to take someone back to Godhead. Hmm. Like we know for sure that certain senior devotees have left in a very, uh, what we say, material way. And we look at it and we think about the material causes. But it's the Krishna factor that is actually working to take that person back home, back to Godhead. Hmm. But you I'm can't sorry. really see that. Right. You can't really see that. We know for sure uh, when Tamal Krishna Goswami left the left the world in a car accident in Mayapur. Um, the day before, he was telling one of his uh, disciples, "You know, take my last bath for me in the Ganges, because I, today I have uh, something else to do." He actually could sense that he was about ready to leave. And when he did leave, uh, the incident was amazing what happened during his departure. Actually, it was indicated that he actually left the body, not because of the accident, but just prior to the accident, Krishna pulled him out so he wouldn't have to experience you know, the, you know, the pain of that car accident. So, um, yeah, there are many incidents like that of great souls who are in a particular situation and Krishna somehow or other elevates them. But we can't, again, we can't flaunt material energy and then think that Krishna was going to give us protection. We have to live, we have to be careful. This place is dangerous. <laughs> yes, Guru Mahal. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much for this uh, explanation. That makes everything very clear. Thank you yeah. so much. 
just we have our example of our uh, your god brother Nittai Nataraj. We just had his another car accident just about two weeks ago when his whole car was destroyed. But he was untouched by the accident. I mean, if you look at the car, you believe you could understand that how is it possible? I mean, he was nothing happened to him at all. Completely, he was completely free from anything. Because as soon as he got hit, he started to chant and the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Uh, I had similar experiences when I was in Vietnam. I was in a helicopter crash and I was calling out for the, for the Lord while I was in the middle, midst of a, a pretty violent helicopter crash. And I practically walked away from the scene unscratched. <laughs> so um, the non-devotees are amazed how the devotees somehow survive all of these horrible situations. But sometimes you can't see. Uh, what Krishna is doing or why he's doing what he's doing. But his protection is complete and it's perfect. Unless you have that faith, you can't practice Krishna consciousness. Uh, we lost your audio, Sri Devi. Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm right here. Just moving the so I can sit down. There was that phrase, Rake Krishna Mode K, Mode Krishna Rake K. If Krishna yeah, wants works. to if Krishna wants to protect someone, no one can harm them. If Krishna mm -hmm. allows someone takes away protection, nothing, no one can save them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Krishna's protection is all complete and perfect. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisances. Thank you for such a nice question, Sri Devi. Very nice question. Any questions from devotees? I think, Maharaj, you're going to ask Prakshad something. I don't know. I just asked him what I should do. Should I go on to chanting or... Should I just uh, sit here and smile until somebody asks a question? We can quarantine with Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> so you, I think that means chant the holy names, right? We recommend Krishna quarantine. <laughs> Mark, that's a question from Srimati. See, I knew I, I could feel people are just a little reserved today. So I'm just Me waiting. too, exactly. Mark. That's why I was a little hesitant, but at the same time, I, I felt bad that you were waiting for devotees to come. So I was hoping, but yes, thank you. <laughs> Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I'll go to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah, I was just thinking whether to ask the question or not, um, but I thought, okay, I'll ask. So um, you said that we have to be serious in the devotional service. Um, so as a grihastha, how serious we should be, Guru Maharaj? Grihetako bone taka sabda hari boli daka. No matter what ashram you're in, who you are, what you're doing, what your situation is, chant the holy names of the Lord. Uh, ashram means place of spiritual cultivation. That is the actual definition of ashram. And so there's four ashrams according to certain principles who follow accordingly. And that is ashram. <laughs> and ashram means where do we develop our Krishna consciousness? So I know devotees who are very expert at maintaining their grihastha 
arrangements and at the same time are very much fixed in Krishna consciousness. So you have to somehow or other uh, become a good time manager where you know how to use your time for both. But you also can become Krishna conscious by maintaining and taking care of family responsibilities. It doesn't have to be separate from your devotional life. It's part of your devotional life when you see it as an opportunity to serve Krishna by serving the activities of, the, of your, uh, your griha. You serve your children by becoming the expert in guiding them from the position of being their mother. And you see them as, you see that service to your children as service to Krishna. Because Krishna has sent these children. So it's a matter of consciousness. These children have come to me by way of Krishna. And therefore my responsibility is to give them whatever they need to grow up nicely and to become Krishna conscious. So therefore, that is service to that living entity who has manifested as your child. Because that, that, that living entity is part and parcel of Krishna. So it's you're actually serving Krishna by serving, by having that consciousness of serving uh, your family members. But we can't get away from service. That's the point. When we get into the enjoying mood, then we're outside of devotional service. We're trying to enjoy family life. We're trying to enjoy uh, our facilities that come by way of family life. I have a nice house. It's for my enjoyment. The house is there, but you should use it to uh, serve Krishna and, and invite others to serve Krishna, have programs, talk about Krishna, chant the holy names of the Lord, and the house is a mandir. And that is no longer a place of eating and sleeping, it's a place of service. Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Happy Ekadasi to you. And to all the people. I think Happy Ekadasi is on the way. It's coming up very soon. All right. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay. So... Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I got my whole obeisances. All glories to you. Lord is real. All glories to you. All glories to you. Just wanted to clarify something because I obviously made a joke about quarantine here and <laughs> the hearing of your disciples and if that threw some of you off i apologize but actually what i meant is quarantine means stick with krishna in whatever situation you're in that is be stuck yeah. with krishna that's what i really meant yeah you quarantine quarantine with krishna <laughs> that's exactly what i meant <laughs> That's called uh, that's called sannyas life or Babaji life. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> just you and Krishna. <laughs> Are there other questions from devotees? It's slowly rolling in, Marge, so that's good. Slowly opening up. We just want to make sure. Are there other questions from devotees? Any comments, Marge? Why, when you were speaking of devotional service, you know, and you and you explained that devotional service as the manifestation of Radharani's energy. And how much can we um, look at devotional service as a means for our growth and purification and not in the mood of, if well, we know, um, I'll do it when I have time, you know, kind of a thing. Like, how do we really grasp that and embrace the understanding wholeheartedly the prime essence and importance of devotional service. <laughs> <laughs> when you realize you're not this body, <laughs> and when you have at least a theoretical understanding, 
that the goal of life is to become Krishna conscious, that this material world is simply meant as a prison house to encapture the living entity into the false idea that he can be happy in, in this arena. And the hard struggle of existence simply leads to, to uh, disappointment and ultimately death. It's everywhere. Mm. Uh, what is the happiness in the material world? So let's let's examine that. If if anyone is thinking, what is we have our duty, we have our material duties. Okay. So for a mother, we have some duties to family. For a father, we also have. If we're children, we have some responsibilities. So we do our material duties, but what is the happiness in this material world? Is it doing our duties? No, the happiness is that there is some satisfaction in working with others and enjoying uh, the presence of another person's, uh, another person's presence. And that comes by way of service. So when you compare the happiness of spiritual life and you compare the happiness of material life, there's no comparison because it's insignificant material happiness. It comes, it goes. But spiritual life simply comes and it grows. It doesn't go, it continues to increase. And that is the nature of spiritual. And therefore the activities in spiritual life all are about ananda. It's, uh, it's called, what is it? Well, what's that? Uh, rasa Vaisai, it's 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 sweet. It's always it's always sweet. There's always a ananda buri varnana. There's an ocean of material happiness in a devotional service, particularly in glorifying the Lord and hearing the glories of the Lord. Material life, where do you get your happiness? You get your happiness when you get some relief from suffering, and that is called happiness. But it's not happiness, it's just a relief from suffering. That's it. If you're hungry, that's a problem. You eat, you say, well, I'm happy now. What did you do? You relieved your hunger. That's all you did. You're counteracting the miseries of material life and calling it happiness. <laughs> that counteraction cannot continue. And the material all will continue to throw things at you, and you can never counteract them. It's just, it's just, just one thing after another. So, Vyapati, one of the contemporary poets, uh, songwriters and the, of Lord Chaitanya, he says that material happiness is like a drop of water in the desert. If you're in the desert, you're thirsty, and somebody comes along and says, give me, a, here's a drop of water, drink to your full satisfaction, you'll be so satisfied, you think, this person is just harassing me. A drop will only increase your desire for water, it doesn't really quench your thirst. So that's the material world. You get a little drop here, and a little drop there, and that's called happiness. But what is that little drop? And then the opportunity says, Society, friendship, and love. In other words, family life. In family life, there's a drop of happiness there. And there's also tons of misery at the same time. <laughs> so <laughs> just to get, squeeze out that drop, you gotta have, you have to undergo so much suffering. <laughs> it's like, all right, there's, a, there's some happiness here, but what do you have to do to get that one drop? You have to kind of like, take that lemon peel that's been squeezed to the to the max and try to squeeze it again. <laughs> what do you get? Some more bitter lemon. Oh no. This is material life. But we're not convinced. <laughs> we're not convinced. When you finally get to old age and you start thinking, maybe the Shastras are right. <laughs> When you, get, when you get enough experiences in life, then you start to realize maybe, the, maybe, maybe what's in the scriptures is actually true. <laughs> but you can be happy in any material situation as long as you bring Krishna there. That's it. 
take, take, take your material and make it spiritual. You don't have to change your position. You don't have to do anything. You know, all you have to do is add Krishna to the mix. That's all. That's all. You can be happy with your friends, your family members, and your all your material possessions if Krishna is the center. Make Krishna the center. And that's the science of bhakti, making Krishna the center. That's all. Cook for Krishna, work for Krishna, think of Krishna, glorify Krishna, tell others about Krishna. See everything in relationship to Krishna. That's Krishna consciousness. Then it's no longer material. Material simply means cut off from Krishna. Once you reconnect anything to, to Krishna again, it's, it's, it, 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 it attains its natural position as being the spiritual energy of Krishna. And when you concentrate on that, it becomes, it becomes more and more thick, it becomes more and more real experience. Our problem is we a little bit of Krishna and a little bit of Maya and a little bit of Krishna and a little bit of Maya. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. There's a uh, post from Rishabhadas Rish Prabhu and a question from Sukhavaha Mataji. So Rishabhadas Prabhu put, uh, illusory energy is very strong, convincing us of material enjoyment, enjoyment again and again. That was his post. And uh, thank you for sharing that post, Prabhu. And Sukhavaha Mataji has a question. She has a hand raised. So go ahead, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada, all glories to your lotus feet. Um, Guru Maharaj, my question is, um, so when we offer our, book, our offering to Krishna and it become, uh, after, after offering it becomes prashad, but is it okay to enjoy that prashad or we have to have that thing in our mind that this is only for our purification we are eating? What sort of uh, no. thought we sh should have? Prashadam is enjoyable. <laughs> but then is, does it become material? Like, no. 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 The consciousness is Krishna has come in the form of this wonderful foodstuffs. And when we cook for Krishna, we should also make it as nice as possible. The mm. taste should be nice, the texture should be nice, the appearance should be nice. All these three, three things, taste, texture, and appearance, all should be very nice. Mm. Because it's meant for Krishna. And then when you take the, the when Krishna is pleased and when you eat it, you don't have to think about being happy, you will be happy. <laughs> It will happen automatically. That's the problem. We become so happy because it is tasty. Prashad is always tasty. And then we started enjoying. And then, then I feel that, is it, is it right? I should enjoy or I should just think that, no, this is because Krishna's Prashad. I'm just eating yeah. it for my purification. Well, yeah, yeah, enjoy it and then share it with others. So they also enjoy. Okay. Then you then they, that is the best use of your enjoyment by thinking how to give others enjoyment also. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. You must cook really nice prasadam. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, give me the give me the service. Come here. Let me do that for you. Mm. Let's see what Krishna arranges. <laughs> Every devotee likes Prashanta. <laughs> I know. Thank you so much for the nice questions, Sukhavaha Mataji. Anyone else has... 
and any uh, clarification and anything that Marsh can shed some light on, uh, please uh, do jump right in. If there isn't, let me go down the list here just to make sure. If there isn't much, would you like to chant one round? Okay, so everyone grab their beads and get into a straight back position, either in the chair or wherever you are, keep your back straight and um, begin. And we begin by offering our respects and obeisances to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Chit. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara, Srivasari Gaur, Bhaktivinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 My obeisances to all the devotees, thank you very much. Uh, Thank you like so much, Maharaj. I'd like to stay longer, but I can't because of other things. But right now I have to move on to something else. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your time. We thank the devotees for joining us. Vantrakapti Vyaschakti, Pusanda Vevacha, Patitanam Pavanevya, Vaishnavevya, Namona, Mahashila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Salinas Chandramali Swami, Ki Jai.